account so that's why i decided to make a video on it because uh, nothing much is available on the internet on this topic how to go and deploy your web sockets uh, running on django channels and daphne so let's start okay so uh, I, th I think you have intermediate knowledge of Django channels and you already know how to make them and you have created now you are only about to deploy them okay so this video is for you so next thing uh, we have to consider here is uh, what I'm using uh, in my PIF fridge so it, it gives these things okay I'm using the version of Daphne 2.2.2 if you don't know about Daphne I will tell you about this this is for, for production use the channel ready is 2.3 and I, I will talk about everything but not about certify and most of the thing like Django storage Django rest nox but uh, these are just you know average having so that I just uh, copied it but uh, the most thing you will use is Django version the channel and uh, the um, twisted uh, AI or IDS, we don't need these two also so but we need channels okay so make sure that you are having channels 2.1.5 and Django 2.1 okay uh, or more than two oh, Django version all right now move next uh, only five bulletproof steps yeah <laughs> and you can work your web socket live so then you are ready to go so first of all uh, what we will use uh, in this video and in your production mode so i consider that you have seen my uh, old video of digital ocean and if you have not seen i i, I mean to say that you know about uh, how to deploy a Django website without web sockets, without web sockets. and if you don't know about no issue uh, uh, check my video on uh, Django deployment and there I have considered everything uh, at, um, lefting the web sockets uh, version thing so now we will consider that uh, web, web socket thing here in this video so we have ng uh, nginx then supervisor gunicorn Django channels redis server and channel redis we will talk about uh, what they each do in Django uh, in detail all right next so first step is to set your nginx file that is nginx we uh, uh, to tell it now um, pronunciate it so uh, first of all uh, uh, what is uh, this thing doing here so for this let me show you a figure as you can see here uh, when you uh, when a user requests something from the web it goes to nginx and nginx directs this thing to the gunicorn all right, and Gunicorn have Django that uh, talks to the Postgres or whatever uh, the database you are using, and it again go, gives to uh, Nginx and then it uh, shows up to the user. All right, so what do they all do is uh, you know, like uh, a web server faces the outside world. All right, web server faces the outside world. It can serve files like HTML, CSS, images directly from the file system. However, it can't talk directly to Django application the web server can't talk, talk directly to the Django application it needs something that will run the application uh, to feed it request from web client and return response web client like browser okay a web uh, server gateway interface that is WSGI uh, does this job so WSGI uh, web server get, gateway interface that we use uh, is do the same job so as you can see in this image here that uh, we are having Django here, and uh, when uh, the vanilla in vanilla Django, we are having browser. Browser requests from the web server. Then Django gives uh, the view uh, in HTTP response, and then Django shows it to the browser. So this is simple, the simplest, you know, vanilla Django. It doesn't have anything in it. But when we use web sockets, this is the picture that goes in hand. Okay, so uh, we will talk about this uh, because we are about to consider. A web socket picture in our uh, video here so web socket is um, two-way hand shaking two-way hand shaking uh, channels is the project that takes Django and extends its ability beyond HTTP to handle web sockets chat protocol or you know IOT protocols etc it does this uh, by taking the core of Django and layering a fully asynchronous layer underneath running Django itself in uh, synchronous mode but handling connection and sockets asynchronously and giving you the choice to write in either style so Django channels is you know all about this and what is Daphne so Daphne the HTTP and web socket termination server okay so uh, you know because the requests are coming from HTTP as well as from web sockets so this is Daphne you know interface server that uh, differentiate what uh, the which request should go in HTTP and which request should go in 
uh, web socket so basically http request begin with like this uh, http request like http uh, dot uh, dot go, uh, colon slash slash www.google.com so it is http request but the web socket request begin with ws or wws uh, according to the security if you are using ssl layer so we have to uh, redirect our http request to the gunicorn okay to the gunicorn server so gunicorn or you know green unicorn is a python wsgi http server okay so uh, it is um, python server uh, for http requests and web sockets uh, we will direct their request to ascii so basically uh, what is ascii ascii is asynchronous server uh, this ascii is asynchronous server gateway interface uh, is the specification which channels and Daphne are built upon. So designed to uh, unite the channel app from a specific application server and provide a common way to write application and middleware code. If you don't know, uh, I will explain with this image here. So as you can see here, the Daphne is the one uh, when the browser gives the request it goes to the interface server Daphne and if it if it if it is HTTP it goes to the uh, HTTP consumer but if it is uh, web socket it goes to directly web socket consumer and this is done by the uh, Daphne and here the consumer HTTP consumer is Gunicore that I, I, I was saying here the HTTP consumer is Gunicore uh, so this part the HTTP request path part is for the Gunicore and this part this whole path is for ASGI, ASGI uh, asynchronous server gateway interface all right so this is how you know we have to redirect http request to gunicorn and wss websocket request to ascii so how we do it for that we have to set up our ng nginx file nginx file uh, and you know most of the time nginx file is available in uh, this file of uh, etc slash nginx slash sites available and the your, your app name uh, so if you run this command on your um, ssh uh, host or where your site is live on that ip then you will get a file in vim editor I, I will show you here so let's begin uh, some code so let's start mm. uh, maybe I have to get out of this virtual environment so let's start a new window completely new window here and now I am having you uh, so let's start uh, I have a site running which is uh, using uh, web sockets so here I am now entering the passwords and now as you can see I have logged in and uh, if I run this command which is sudo vim this actually vim and etc this is uh, this what, what this is showing is uh, the relative path basically so nginx slash sites available and slash uh, whatever the project name is uh, uh, for me it is hmt underscore dj and you can see here this this file is you know your nginx file so if i have to edit something in it so just press i you will go into the insert mode and then you can edit everything in it to get out of the insert mode just press escape and press colon and write quit because i'm not writing anything so i'm just quitting it so i will show you what uh, the file is doing here so as you can see the so first thing uh, is we have to uh, set up the upstream app server uh, what this app server will do it will redirect our every request to the gunicorn.soc file so this is for http um, uh, request so whenever the http request will arrive we will redirect it to the gunicorn file and uh, these are two locations as you can see here if the location is blank like http slash nothing here there so it we will redirect them to proxy to app we will define this function soon and if there are web sockets in them so we will redirect to proxy to web server okay what is uh, these two things here so these two things are so first of all uh, proxy to web server so for pro proxy to web server we are uh, passing this to http uh, this uh, local host uh, and the port is 8001 uh, what this is doing is you are saying like a uh, why HTTP here because you know web socket requests are uh, handled with the uh, ASGI server and we will redirect them to where the ASGI is running and our ASGI will run on this uh, when we will run ASGI in the taxi step so for this that's why I am doing this and uh, these are you know the configuration of nginx uh, and everything you have to just copy and paste all right and then uh, we have to read uh, see this thing also proxy to app so proxy to app will be forwarded to 
this uh, app server all right so in this way http request will go here and uh, websocket request will go here that's it nothing you know big issue here so next thing uh, after you do it just you have to type sudo service nginx restart and after this nginx is restart and uh, your this these files will take in configuration so i have left some static settings or static file settings here because of the less of uh, lack of space but you can see in you know description of the video and now the next thing is call the supervisor uh, to call again and again why because you know supervisor uh, is running the processes for us and if the processes uh, get you know crashed so it will again them uh, again run them like uh, the uh, this sg server is running on this and if somehow sg server breaks then it will again wake them up uh, so we have to set up the supervisor to go to the supervisor you have to type sudo vim etc then in the, under the supervisor conf.d and your app.conf so most important is you should use this conf otherwise the supervisor file will get opened but it will not uh, you know um, uh, sustain the changes that's why i'm right must write dot conf okay this is important you have to write the this dot conf every time so this is you know first process of the supervisor in this first process i am you uh, having a program and this redirects the http request to gunico and start okay then uh, you have to pass the user uh, the pseudo user you are having and this is you know if there is some error they will be pasted in gunico.error.log and the next process will be of server interface that is daphne because we have seen here that we have to run our daphne server in uh, in this port 0000 and port number 8001 so we are running the Daphne with our supervisor because supervisor will run again and again. So Daphne B and this is the IP then port 8001 and SG dot application home at DJ SG dot application. This is your uh, actually project name. Okay, now we will see it in detail now uh, after that this step. So SG and uh, we will set up this uh, SG file also and I uh, hear the directory where this uh, SG file is leaving and again the same home urban logs and this thing this is you know for uh, error printing okay and the user now next is check the status of supervisor and if you are not understanding what the user and this image and this file is doing you have to watch my previous video on deployment now the thing is check the status of supervisor after updating it so um, supervisor uh, after you update you have to reread and update it and then you can see the status of your app whatever the name of the app in my case it is uh, home mat underscore dj then because we have two processes here the home mat dj and server interface so it will show you the status that they are running with some uh, PID and this is the time since they are running like this home at DJ where it is redirect, redirecting my HTTP request to Gunicorn as we have set up here uh, like this so it is redirecting my every process so it is running from one day and but the server interface is running about five hours so if it then kill if they somehow get crashed supervisor will wake them up again okay so uh, uh, you can see here also if I run sudo supervisor CDL and status all uh, to show my all app okay this is to to show and you can see here the same thing home my DJ is running for one day and 11 hours and server interface uh, is running for 15 hours and this is server worker that is fatal there are some problems so i i, I can see their uh, details so if somehow you know if you are working on this thing these two things we don't need server uh, server workers here to run our uh, web sockets and if somehow this thing come in uh, any of these two then you have to check the log file we have this log file created under this directory section okay uh, then in the third step we have to set up our setting.py file of the django configuration so firstly we will set up the redis file then routing.py sg.py and setting.py files so what redis is redis basically is an open source you know memory data structure so use it as a database catch, uh, catch and message broker okay so first thing first uh, the most important thing to note here is you know now uh, because we are handling two type of request the one is http request that are going to be routed to view uh, to our django view and the websocket request uh, which are you know going to be routed uh, to the consumers so http request goes to the view and websocket request go goes to the consumer uh, so which are uh, to handle both of the requests we need a router and it is the part of channel there which is back end of channels 
so SG Redis, some of the brokers are uh, SG Redis or uh, that we are having here channel Redis. Okay, so this thing, uh, what it will do is it will redirect the backend thing to channel Redis and Redis channel layers and host will be this. So you have to run your Redis server on this port. Okay, so you just have to install the Redis and if, uh, and then run the Redis server command so you can see that uh, your ready server will run by this command as you can see here so it is running under uh, by default so you, it is saying that uh, the address already already in use which i am running it already okay so if i say redis cli ping so yeah it is saying pong that means it is running this is to check whether your redis is running or not so it is my uh, the my ready server is running and it is running in port as you can see here uh, 6379 uh, 6379 and this is the port I am using here also in my settings.py and uh, here is your SG application is leaving so after that this is your SG application uh, routing.py actually so in the routing.py you have to tell the URL uh, like I have an app there notify and then I am uh, making their, their URL pattern to be routed here okay so whatever the app you have where you have to consume your you know uh, web sockets you can pass that URL pattern in this URL router function in the last step we have to call the web sockets and yeah this is done this is totally totally done uh, at this step so to call the web sockets you have to use WSS if you are you know working on uh, SSL layer thing and if you are not working on SSL like HTTP uh, S, so you can just pass ws then whatever your url is and ws slash notify this is you know url pattern you are defined in your personal app and then because i am having some strings of character so this is defined totally by me and uh, these are the, because we are, i am calling a new web socket and i storing in the socket then i am giving this on open on message on close and on error functions uh, okay and in the last uh, my advice uh, is you know addresses are killer uh, like we are having lot of addresses every time like this uh, we have to pass the address here we have to pass address here so make sure that your addresses are fine make sure that you are uh, writing the correct address and if somehow you write the wrong address you can always check like here in my cyber duck um, you can always check like uh, what are the addresses that uh, no, uh, you are getting in error so these are the three files nginx error file and here you can see if there is some problem as you can see in mine there are some issues uh, here the request failed connection and everything everything will be shown here in the errors uh, there is also like unicorn access error and all so uh, this thing like this way they, they will tell you like uh, this address was found so you have to modify that address okay so be sure while you set your address debug and change the address if you are not sure it is right so you have to debug by using the log files so uh, now we are about to have a look uh, on the app that have the web sockets so here I, you can see uh, that uh, I am running a script uh, which is here and I'm calling the web socket function with this uh, this is my URL the, this is the set of character strings that I have to pass this is actually a secret hex code for a particular user to get connected and this is um, you know sockets uh, functions on a uh, on message on close on error and all so if I refresh this page again and you can see it is connected so this is the message come and it is saying pong from my ww.s uh, .com and this is the url that i am passing and everything you can see here in uh, what is happening so if you got connected uh, you will see message like this uh, okay so uh, first thing uh, if i get the things again so firstly we uh, redirected our uh, request to nginx and nginx sets the request to daphne as well as in um, in uh, Gunicorn, Gunicorn processes the you know HTTP standard HTTP request and serve the HTML files and supervisor is the one who get running the Daphne server as well as um, Django server and all WSGI server and channel Redis and you have to run the Redis server also and uh, you can check whether the Redis server is running or not by using this Redis CLI ping command okay so that's all and if you have any problem uh, you know configuring your circuit you can always write in the comments thank you very much